before you set foot in the Philippines, um, I advise you doing this. Um, you, if you follow my videos, you'll see back that I've done a lot of stuff over the period of time I was in the Philippines. Um, but I also had what I call fits of toe dipping, um, where went into the Philippines, got married, went back out for a few months, made some money, come back in. And then I slowly built up my income in the Philippines doing different things. Now, the important bit with this is you should be starting to do that now. Now, it doesn't need to be income in the Philippines. Um, it could be savings. It could be uh, building up your savings so you're living off the interest. Building up your savings so you can partially live off the interest and find other things to do. Um, like these YouTube videos, they make a little bit of money. They're not great money, but at the same time, how much would it cost me to uh, gain the same amount in the interest on a loan in the bank uh, on savings? Quite a lot at the moment um, because the the amount that banks are giving you isn't a lot. So what do I do with mine? It ticks over. Um, the money off YouTube, the money off my websites, they're actually funding the renovations on the um, apartments back in the Philippines. We're finishing off the three bed. But going slightly off tangent, but these are the sort of things I'm talking about, because the fact is when you first go into the Philippines, you may have a lump sum and think that will last me for five years, a year. I'll tell you now, it fritters away very quickly, especially if you're with somebody who knows you've got it, um, because a lot of Filipinos have no value of money because they've they've lived on a inward economy an inward economy is basically it's funded by relatives overseas their education was funded by somebody else even their allowances every month was funded by somebody else um and generally a lot of the expats meet women from that those circles so the point here is you need to be working on how you're going to make an income don't assume this pot of gold that you made will carry you through the next 30 years or whatever it won't um, things happen. Uh, a motorbike crash could cost you 30,000, 40,000 uh, pesos if it's a bad one. Um, a heart attack can cost you two and a half million. The fact is, all these things happen in the Philippines, and if you've got money uh, trickling in, you can keep yourself afloat, you can support yourself. Um, like the blog and websites, I haven't done a lot with them at the moment because I have a much bigger income uh, for my stuff in Europe. So why why do I still do it? Well, the fact is, it's it's still an income. Um, plus, I like sharing these videos. I like talking to people um, because once you've been to the Philippines, you'll understand it a bit better. Um, I remember meeting a guy that was involved with something quite serious. He wasn't uh, the person that had actually done it or actually he was just accused of it but the fact is some of the problems he'd actually faced going back to the uk were down to the fact that he had nobody to talk to because people can't relate to the things that happen in the philippines it's a completely different world it seems so surreal to day-to-day -day life in europe so he actually drove miles just to meet me in person so he could actually do a bit of therapy almost um have somebody to talk to that actually understands the environment so the point being, when you're in the Philippines, be aware you want to look for little opportunities. Don't invest big in anything. Um, I see business opportunities where people throw money at things. They're normally going bust within months. Um, things like the peso peso machines, they make tick over money. Um, and a lot of the time, the way, the way I work it is I work on the bills. The first thing is like the peso peso, pays the electric bill and the internet. I then get the, uh, the apartment rentals. They pay for my fr grocery bills. Um, and then you've got your um, other bits and pieces coming in that fund all your other bills. And if you've noticed, all of them involve me not actually doing any of the work. The reason behind that is because I'm not actually working to pay all the bills. I'm now free to make more money elsewhere. Also means when I'm offshore, I'm making money. It means that while I'm here in Spain, the Philippines are still making money. Um, we've got two of our apartments um, available for rent at the moment. A third one's going to be available very soon. 
the fact is, it's a continuous thing. And it all started from a little one bedroom place um, that me and my wife first had uh, on some ancestral land and we built it up from that. Did I have a lump sum when I arrived? I had six, about £6,000. But I thought that £6,000 is not money to spend, but simply money to invest and develop something with. Um, it's a bit like my 30% rule, where you're expecting a 30% increase in costs over 12 months, so you should always be striving to get another 30% on what you had last year. Uh, it's why you hear when people go, we had no salary uh, improvement this year. Um, my money's worth less. Yes, it is. Because when you go to the stock market, they're always pushing things up. They don't push it down. You go to the supermarket, they never decrease the prices, they go up. So although your wages don't go up, what you can do is start to see that you should be increasing your income. Now, it doesn't need, mean you have to be working all the time. There's always opportunities on the side to do things. Writing e-books, doing um, tutoring or something, or some skill that you have that you can market to your local community. It all brings in extra money. And it doesn't have to be long term because it's a bit like here in Spain. We're after that bigger apartment. Uh, we're struggling to find the owner of a, a better one. Um, 69,000 on one website and it's 90,000 with a real estate agent. It's got their uh, logo in the window. I'm trying to find the owner because um, I can get it for 69,000. And we can get that, that deal all closed. But the first thing, if that, if that doesn't go, I've seen another one at 30, 38,000, two bedroom uh, bungalow. Why would I go for a two bedroom bungalow when I need bigger? Because I've already got 10,000 euros in cash. Um, which means my mortgage is only 28,000. By the time the mortgage actually goes through, I would have had another 2,000 to add to it. The Philippines projects are coming to an end as well. Um, although we've got the three bed upstairs, now the windows are in, I can pause that for six months and I could actually move money from the Philippines to support getting the mortgage paid off in Spain. So that's how I work. As you can see, I don't just sit there and rely on my income. And you shouldn't do either. You shouldn't rely on just your pension or something else either. There's always bits and pieces to make money on. Um, and a lot of it will work better offshore. I know somebody was talking earlier. Uh, what was I watching? Uh, Life Beyond the Sea it was. Uh, I can't remember. I think it's guy's name's Ray, I think. Anyway, he was talking, talking about uh, a guy that was doing SEO after his money ran out. SEO can make some good money if you know how to do it. If somebody's only making $250 a month, they're not doing it right. They're doing it too cheap. I know a person who got, got work with Alibaba. Um, they got something like thirty to 100,000 websites in one chunk. Um, you farm it out. You don't do it yourself. It's like the call center. I don't take calls. I have 45 people do it for me. You're not there to be the cheap labor. You're there to generate it. You're there to bring the business in because at the end of the day, the cost of living in the Philippines for the average Filipino is probably the six to ten thousand a month. When we do the call center, it's already paying fifteen thousand plus a month um, for non performing ones. They're still making more than the minimum wage. The reason being is the call center will still generate enough profit off every single person that it makes a big enough uh, income. And most businesses are like that. If you look at even the water machines that are only one peso, having one of them, you won't make a lot of money. It's like my peso peso machines were the arcade machines. We had five, but the key to them was we already owned the computers, we already built the machines, um, we just left them outside and just emptied the money out of them and they sat there for years. That is a perfect residual income without any aggro. Um, they're basic machines, but they generate cash. And that, that is what you need to be looking for. Things that you can make money on without actually doing a lot of work with it. Uh, the less work and the more profit, the better it is. Um, as, as you probably heard in my other video, I'm in funding circle at the moment. Um, I've started off with a small investment, waiting for that to go out, then I'll add another. And keep adding every month 
I'm expecting that to build up to a few thousand pounds in the next six months. Um, and then I've just opened the ISA as well. That'll be getting about £250 a month as well. All these things are building up in investments. Because I'm retiring in 10 years. Um, I do have a good income and I do have a good life. Um, but I'm tired. I'll be honest with you. I am actually tired. Um, I travel too much. Uh, I work too hard. I work, work too many hours. Um, and I'm ready to go at 50. I'm, I'll be out the game when I'm 50. I'm retiring early. For that, as you can see, I'm working hard at it. And there's nothing to stop you doing exactly the same. You you can set your own goal and say, I want out of this in five years. I want out of this in 10 years. But work hard at it. Don't just say, well, I want out of it and then do nothing about it. Right now, kids are in school. That's, that was sorted out this week. Um, the property we're sorting out at the minute. Um, we've already put the deposit together. And if I could buy it in cash, it'd be nice. But at the moment, can't really see that happening simply because uh, some of the projects I was trying to get going this year haven't developed yet. Doesn't mean they won't develop, but several people have let me down so far. Um, I won't say false promise. I just don't know what they get up to. You know, you, you get them all set up and put them in the right direction, and then uh, they just go quiet for a couple of weeks, then they come back to you again. Um, I find it bizarre, but expats do it. People wherever you are do it. Filipinos do it all. It's called dithering. Um, when you have to put an investment into a business and you don't go for it, it's dithering. Um, and a lot of these ideas are their own. Um, I'm just waiting for them to make a decision on whether they're going for it so I can actually push their business forward for them. But dithering. Uh, so these things happen. That's why mine's a bit stalled because I could have been working on other things for the last couple of months. But hey ho, I'm still ahead of the game. Um, we, we're getting our deposit together. We're got the kids and family life set up in Spain. Work still ongoing. My new Mercedes arrives in five days. Um, nothing to grumble about. But the whole point is when you're going to the Philippines, you need to start building up those little residual incomes that come in every month. Um, even if it's like taking calls for a small business somewhere. Um, the amount, it's up to you. Um, personally, if you can make as much money as possible now and then get it into investments that actually churn a profit for you, that's a better way of doing it. Because then when you do finally go to the Philippines, you won't need to work as hard. All right. Thanks for watching.